Brachos Daf Chaf Gimel discusses primarily halachas related to using the bathroom. Mimar begins with an exposition of the Malchokis about somebody who needed to use the bathroom in the middle of Shema. Mimar discusses someone who needs the bathroom before. Is he allowed to start Shema or Shema Nesrei? Mimar then discusses entering the bathroom with tefillin on. Then Mimar discusses what you do with your tefillin if you're not entering the bathroom with them. Where do you put that? Mimar ends off by discussing what type of a bag can you use for tefillin. And what else can you put in that bag? Along the way, the Gemara will bring in halachos of what you're allowed to hold during Shema Nasrei, and the Gemara will drop a bit of advice for somebody who needs to use the bathroom. Now, let's see the Gemara's beginning. The Gemara is in the middle of discussing a machlokes regarding a brisa. The brisa said that somebody who's in the middle of saying Shema Nasrei, and he realizes that he's having a urinal flow, he's having an accident. So the brisa had said he should stop. And wait until the flow finishes, and then he can continue. The machlokes Rav Amnuna and Rav Chizda. We're not sure who says what. Is where does he continue from? Does he have to go back to the beginning, or can he pick up where he left off? So in our Gemara, we're trying to figure out what is behind this machlokes. So Gemara tries two attempts at understanding this machlokes. First, the Gemara wants to say, "Oh, this is based on an existing machlokes that we are aware of. There is an existing an existing machlokes. So somebody pauses." Without any reason, he pauses not for anything that's interrupting him. He stops in the middle of a Shema, and he pauses long enough to say the entire Shema. This is an existing Machlokas. Does he have to go back to the beginning now, or can he still pick up where he left off? Did he lose the Shema, Nesri, the Shema or the Shema Nesri that he said so far? So I wants to say that this case is talking about where he paused to let the flow finish, and it ended up being long enough that he could have said the entire thing. So now that old machlokas will apply here. Does he have to go back to the beginning, or can he pick up where he was up to? Zimar says this can't be the machlokas of here, because according to the opinion that he has to go back to the beginning, it's only because he paused for so long. That means that this shita would agree that if he didn't pause for so long, he can pick up where he left off. Well, he would have to say so. He would have to say that what I'm telling you is only if he paused for so long. He couldn't say, no, general rule, you always have to go back to the beginning. That wouldn't be fair. So, the Gemara tries a second attempt to explain what this Machlokas is. The Gemara says, really, we're referring to a case where he did not pause long enough to be able to say the entire thing, and has nothing to do with that discussion at all. The issue is that if he had an accident in the middle, that means that when he started, he needed to use the bathroom badly enough that he couldn't hold himself in. In a state of having to use the bathroom so badly, does that make the Shema, or the Shema Nasser that he said so far, not the Yaitza? Does that cancel it? That's the machlokas over here. The Gemara brings a brisa which seems to s- refer to a similar thing. The brisa says somebody who needs to use the bathroom is not allowed to say Shema Nasrei. If he says it, it doesn't count. It's a toyeva. It's repulsive. The Gemara quotes, and it's not clear if the next part is part of the brisa or it's Amram speaking on the brisa that it depends how long he could hold himself for. And then this is for sure the Amram speaking that it's he has to be able to hold himself up until the time to walk a parsa. The Gemara now quotes two psukim to support the halacha that one is not allowed to begin Shemona if he needs to use the bathroom. One of them is because it says, He coined the cross, like Yisrael, call Yisrael, prepare yourself. Towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, meaning you need to be prepared before you are ready to be mispal Shemona Esrei, so you have to make sure you don't need to use the bathroom. The second one is on the Pasuk Shemor Raglacha Kasher Telech, Watch your feet. When you walk, so the Gemara says it doesn't refer to your feet, it refers to what is near your feet, which is the two exits to the body, which are used for the bathroom. You have to make sure that they are watched, that they are clean before you begin Shemona Esrei. Now the Gemara quotes from Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, who has a whole another shot on this Pasuk. He says that the entire thing is referring to somebody who should be avoiding bringing Karbonus. He should avoid a virus and avoid Karbonus, and if he does have to bring a Karbon, he should do it right. With tshuva, and the drasha is as follows: Shmor ragelcha kasher teilech el beis olekim. First of all, Shmor ragelcha, watch your feet. You shouldn't need to go to the beis hamigdash. You shouldn't do any averus. You shouldn't have to bring carbonis. If you do, so then bring the carbon el beis olekim. The karov l'shmaya. The pasuk says, and approach and hear what the chachamim do. They do tshuva with their carbonis. They don't just bring a carbon and forget about it. But don't be mitesh aksilim zevach like the fools who bring the carbonis. Ki einim yed. They don't know how to do bad. The Gemara says, well, what? The fools don't know how to do bad? That means that they're tzaddikim? Whereas, no, it doesn't mean that they don't know how to do bad. It means that they don't know the difference between good and bad. They don't know if what they did is good or bad. They bring the carbon without realizing that it's an avera at all that they did, and therefore they don't do tshuva. So, that Akadosh Baruch says, make sure you do tshuva together with your carbon. 
The Gemara now moves on to discuss halachas pertaining to the bathroom, beginning with, is one allowed to enter the bathroom wearing tefillin? So throughout the lengthy discussion here, we will differentiate between a Beis HaKisei Kavua, a permanent bathroom, and a Beis HaKisei Arai, a temporary restroom. Kavua generally means one which either contains fecal matter or is used on a frequent basis for solid waste. Beis HaKisei Arai is usually one that's used only for urine, or is not something that has been used before, it's just beginning to be used now. So the Gemara says, first of all, somebody who has tefillin on is not allowed to go into base like he say kavua, where there is a solid matter, or he needs to use it for solid matter. He has to take it off four amas away, leave it there, and only then can he step inside. Then the Gemara says, or Achabar Huna says, that if it's a basic he say all right that doesn't apply if it's only used for liquid waste now when he comes out he's not allowed to put it on he has to be four almost away from the restroom now the gemara wants to know is a person allowed to enter a permanent bathroom which might have solid waste in it but he's not using it for that he's just using it for liquid waste so the Gemara says, they asked this question to Rava, and he said no, because when a person is using the bathroom, we're afraid he may realize that if he came here for liquid waste, but he needs to use it for solid waste as well, or the Gemara says he may pass wind, and these are all things that happen whenever anybody ends the bathroom, therefore a person should not go in there with tefillin on, this is where the tefillin is on him, because he may end up doing one of these things which are not appropriate to do with tefillin on. The Gemara now moves on to the halacha of where to put the tefillin if you're taking them off, which you should do before entering. So the Gemara says if you're not wearing the tefillin, you're not, you, you are allowed to enter with them into the bathroom. That's Basil Shita. Beishame says you should leave them outside. And he says that to put them in the holes of the wall facing outward. Now, the Gemara expounds on this. Expands on this. The Gemara says as follows. There used to be a wall around the field. The wall was a big, thick stone wall, and it had holes on the outside part of the wall facing the street, and the inside part of the wall facing the bathroom. The question was where to put the tefillin. If you put them on the inside part of the wall, it was susceptible to mice. If you put them on the outside part of the wall, it was susceptible to be stolen by people walking by. So, therefore, Beis Hillel said, you take them with you into the bathroom. You don't want either of those two things to happen. Beis Shammai had said you should leave them on the outside part of the wall, Rabbi Akiva, who interestingly is from Beis Shammai, but he he switched to Beis Hillel at some point. He says you hold them inside your clothing with your hand so that they're not exposed to the air of the bathroom, and then you can take them in. The Gemara quotes uh, an incident about somebody who left them in the outside of the wall, and a Zaina walked by, a prostitute, and she took his tefillin, and she went to the basement, and she said, look what this person gave me as my salary for the services that I provided for him. Now, of course, it was false, but when he heard about what happened, this victim of hers, he climbed up to the roof, and he fell off. So, the Gemara says, therefore, they canceled all of this, and said that you should take it with you into the bathroom. The Gemara says you should roll it up like a safer Torah, so that none of it is exposed. The Gemara also says that if you're not planning on putting them on anymore today because it's close to evening, or if you're taking them off for the night, then you should put them in a bag. Uh, the Gemara also says if you're going to roll them up, make sure that the straps aren't hanging. There shouldn't be any stretch of the straps hanging. The straps have a special kedusha. They have the letters, the shin, the dalit, and the yud on them. Now, if you're going to put them in a bag, the Gemara says it depends what kind of bag you're putting them in. If it's a bag that's specifically for the tefillin, it's the permanent tefillin bag, you can't take that into the bathroom because the bag itself is Tashmishi Kedusha. The only way you can is if the bag is big enough that there is a tefach space between the tefillin itself and the bag. The Gemara references the halacha that tumma inside a coffin doesn't escape the coffin if there's space between the source of tumma and the walls of the coffin, a tefach space at least, if the tumma is squashed, if it's called ritsutsa, there's no space, then it breaks out. But if there's a space, then it's held in. Now, if the bag that the tefillin are in are not permanently designated as a tefillin bag, then it's not a problem, and you can leave it the way it is. The Gemara now quotes two interesting incidents that happened relative to this halacha. One was Rabbah Babrachana following of Yechanan, and one was Rava following of Nachman. In either case, the one that was being followed needed to use the bathroom, and he was holding in his hand a safer of Agadita. So he gave it to the person following him, and he said, Can you hold this for me 
why he used the bathroom, but he was also holding tefillin, and the tefillin said, I'll take it with me into the bathroom, even though he had somebody to give it to. Uh, generally, this halacha, which we've discussed thus far, is where you have nowhere to put the tefillin. But here he has somebody to hand it to, but he said, no, I'm going to bring it into the bathroom with me, because once Chazal said it's permitted to take it into the bathroom, I prefer to take it in. That way it will protect me from the spirits, the mazikim, that are in the restroom over there. Well, once we're on the subject of holding things, the Gemara says that there are certain things you should not be holding in the middle of Shemana Esrei. You should not hold tefillin, you should not hold the Sefer Torah, you should not hold a knife or money or a plate that's full of food or a loaf of bread. All these things you will not be able to concentrate on your tefillin if you're holding them because you're afraid that they will fall or spill. Similarly, one should not hold tefillin and a Sefer Torah if he's using the restroom, even if he's just using it in a standing urinating position. The Gemara says you should also be careful not to sleep with tefillin or a Sefer Torah. The Bryce we just quoted said that it is forbidden for a person to be standing and urinating while holding tefillin. So the Gemara wants to know, who is this? We had saw before that Basil says you are allowed to bring tefillin into the bathroom, even to use it for solid waste. So Rav wants to say that this is Beis Shamai, who says that that's Asr, because if it would be Beis Hillel, if you're allowed to use, if you're allowed to hold tefillin during solid waste, you're certainly allowed to hold it during liquid waste. So this is Beis and it's not Halachadik. The Gemara says, but hold on a second. There's another statement in this Brisa. The Brisa says, that which I forbade for you here, I permitted for you here, which the Gemara understands to mean that which is usser in a bathroom of liquid waste is permitted in a bathroom of solid waste. The Gemara says, this can't be Beis because Beis holds everything's usser in all bathrooms. It must be referring to Beis Hillel, and you do see there's some kind of interesting thing. Although Beis Hillel said it's permitted in a bathroom of solid waste to hold tefillin, in a bathroom of liquid waste, it's usser. The Gemara says, hold on a second, I'll tell you a different shot. This whole permitted here, forbidden there, is not talking about solid waste, liquid waste. It's talking about something else entirely. It's not talking about holding tefillin at all. It's talking about something else entirely. It's talking about what part of the skin and the body one is allowed to reveal. Because we saw two braces. One says that a person should reveal only a tefach behind him when he uses the bathroom, and another one said that a person can reveal a tefach behind him and two tefachim in front of him, in the front. So the says, what are these two things? So the says, it must be, one is referring to when one is using the bathroom for solid waste, then he only needs to expose it expose a tefach behind him, because of tzniyas. And the other one is referring to when somebody is using the bathroom for liquid waste, then he want, he has to expose a tefach behind him, and two tefachim in the front. So he says, well, a second, for liquid waste, I understand two tefachim in the front. What do you need two tefachim behind? What do you need one tefach behind him for? What does it have to do with liquid waste? That's not a valid pshat in 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 this at all. Simor so says, you know, really I'll tell you that we're talking about not liquid waste versus solid waste. We're talking about a man using the bathroom versus a woman using the bathroom. A woman only needs to expose the tefach behind her. That's all that's needed. Everything heads in that d- direction. A man, if he's using for solid waste, needs to expose the tefach behind him and also to tefach him in front because since he's bearing down on forcing waste matter out of the entire part of the body, it could come out liquid waste at the same time, and therefore he should make sure to expose the front so that it shouldn't spray on his clothing. The Gemara says, therefore, that is the pshat between what is mutter here and usr there. Therefore, that entire phrase was referring to exposing the skin. It's not referring to wearing tefillin. And the whole wearing tefillin thing, we didn't say anything about mutter here, usr there, and it could really be Beis Shammai, and it's not according to the halacha, like Rava said. The Gemara says, well, hold on a second, there's another phrase in the Mishnah here. The Mishnah says, Zel of tshuva. Comparing what was permitted here and also there, which we're not clear what it is, is a, there's a Kavachimer here. So, the Gemara now wants to say as follows. If you're telling me that it's referring to a man using the bathroom and a woman using the bathroom, and it's nothing to do with tefillin, so why are we saying it's a Kavachimer of tshuva? It's a Kavachimer that cannot be knocked off. There's no Kavachimer. It's a very practical thing. A man needs to expose skin in the front, and a woman does not. So why is what's this kavu chaymer? This kavu chaymer phrase must be referring to the tefillin sugya, and therefore we know that it's got to be beis hillel and it's not beis shamai. The gemara now says, okay, fine. You want to tell me it's beis hillel? I'll accept that. But what's what's actually the pshad? Why would beis hillel say that you're allowed to hold your tefillin while using the restroom for solid waste, but not for liquid waste? Versus it's very simple. Liquid waste sprays. you got to be able to clean it up. You can't be having tefillin around. Solid waste, you don't have that concern. Versus, says, well, if that's true, so then why is it a kavachar mishayin el of tshuva? It's a very practical thing again. 
So the Gemara says, well, well, when, when we said Kavachem Rishayin of Tshuva, we didn't mean the Kavachem can't be removed. We meant this is not a halacha which can be derived through Kavachem reasoning, because we're not talking about a Kala and a Chumr. We're not, we're not referring to that a bathroom of solid waste is more Chumr than a bathroom of liquid waste, Kala and Chumr. It's a practical thing. One has concern for spring, and one does not. The Gemara now drops a bit of advice for somebody who wants to use the bathroom before he enters the Suda. He doesn't want to have to leave in the middle, but he's having trouble um, being successful in expunging the waste material, the Gemara says he should walk around, and that will help him use the bathroom. The Gemara says he should either walk four amas ten times, or ten amas four times, and between each set, he should check to see if he'll be successful at this time. Now the Gemara says somebody who wants to go into a suda should not go in with his tefillin on, just in case he may drink and come to a bazaar of the tefillin. The Gemara quotes an opinion that argues that says he should bring the tefillin on, he should put it on the table near where he sits. It's a big covered for him that he shouldn't have his tefillin off longer than he needs to. How long should it be there? The Gemara says until the time of Berchas Hamazon. Now the Gemara goes to the of placing other things in a bag or other enwrapment together with tefillin. So the Gemara says if you have a bag that is specifically set aside for using for tefillin, you should not put other things in it, like money or something like that. The Gemara winds up with a machlek is over here, which factors you need. According to the first opinion, it has to be that it was designed, it was made, it was set aside for tefillin, and tefillin were actually put in it. If you just had one of those two factors, it's not also to put other things in it. According to the second opinion, which is a Bayi, the Gemara says, if it was set aside for use as tefillin, that makes it also to use for other things, even if it was not actually used for tefillin. But if it was used for tefillin and it was not set aside, that does not make it also to use for other things besides tefillin yet. The Gemara now discusses where you can store your tefillin at night. The Gemara says, under one's feet is certainly not allowed. The question is, can one store it under his head? Rav Yaisir, Rav Nechonia asked Rav Yehuda this question, and he answered him that Shmuel said that one is permitted to store it under his head even if his wife is with him in the bed and they may be consummating their marriage at the time. And then the Gemara calls a price that says one may not. One may only store it under his head if his wife is not with him in the bed. The Gemara says that slugs up Shmuel, rejects Shmuel's opinion, but the halacha is like Shmuel anyway in order to keep better care of the tefillin from being stolen or attacked by mice.